Good evening, you are watching the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television First the Headlines. The Supreme National Committee for the Electronic Census of Population Housing and Establishments 2020 approves the form and work plan of its project. Al Huta Cave in the Wilaya of Al Hamra is reopened to the public after its renovation. And the Middle East Exhibition for Transport and Logistics Services is launched in Masqat. Those were the headlines now for the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos has received a cable of thanks from Her Excellency Theresa May, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, in reply to His Majesty's cable of greetings on her assuming the position of Prime Minister. The Supreme National Committee for the Electronic Census of Population, Housing and Establishments 2020 approved the form and the work plan of the census project. The plan included the work mechanism and the proposed time frame for the project's implementation. The committee also approved the formation of a technical committee assigned to study the compre comprehensive plan of the census, its phased plans, following up its execution and working on providing the potential and the human resources, as well as to overcome obstacles and challenges that might appear during the implementation stages of the project. The committee further discussed the standard address system in the Sultanate, which is supervised by the National Center for Statistics and Information in collaboration with the relevant organizations. As this project enters its second phase, a central database will be developed to facilitate easy access to information and data by the public organizations and linking such data to their systems. Al Huta Cave, Oman's most popular natural tourist destination, reopened to the public today. The cave system is one of Oman's true natural wonders, with Al Huta experiencing around 75,000 visitors a year before it closed for renovation. The enhanced Al Huta experience will enable people to get the most from their visits. A completely refurbished train will improve visitor flow throughout the attraction, as well as enabling visitors to discover more about the history of the cave at an interactive geological museum. Families are well catered for with a children's play area and a gift shop on site. A new restaurant adds to the well-rounded experience. The, co the cave system stretches more than 4.5 kilometers with only 500 meters publicly accessible. However, visitors can discover a lot of the system's history and features in the geological museum which showcases of over 150 items of rock, wood, corals and other unique materials. The exhibition also provides four interactive stations with a live show of each phenomenon to allow visitors to learn about the formation of the stunning natural phenomenon. The Middle East Exhibition for Transport and Logistic Services inaugurated with participation of 75 local and international companies. The exhibition came at a time that logistic sector constitutes economic mobility where it is hoped to contribute with around 14 billion Omani Rials by 2040. The inauguration ceremony was presided over by His Highness Sayyid Mohammed bin Salim Al Said. In a statement for the Sultanate of Oman Radio and Television, Ahmed bin Ali Al Blushi, CEO of National Transport Company Muasalat, said that there are many regulating reasons inside Sultan Qaboos University which prevent the entry of companies' buses on campus in the current time. The Sultanate recorded a 7% growth rate in the company's revenues on the GCC level during the first half of the current year. The report, issued by Kuwait Financial Center and published in the Gulf Online website, mentioned that revenues of the companies listed in the Gulf shares markets retreated by 8%, pointing out that revenues of 650 companies listed in seven Gulf financial markets amounted to $32,800,000. 
The report emphasized that the growth rate was negative on the GCC level except for the Sultanate's companies, which registered a growth of 7%. It further explained that the recession is due to the continuous oil price decline and liquidity shortage, as well as the slow global growth. The Ministry of Manpower began receiving labor complaints and reports electronically as an experimental stage for two months and to be applied mandatorily in coming November. This application enables national and foreign manpower at the private sector enterprises to render complaints from their places through the Ministry's electronic website, which can be downloaded in smartphones and Senate centers. This service includes receiving workers' complaints, tracking the status of the registered complaints, and following the procedures. The e-system also enables arrangement of discussion sessions of the com complaints and place of holding them via text message or email. Still to come in our news bulletin. The benefits of the Mediterranean diet is probably the secret of the long lives of the residents of an Italian town. Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. Exchanging expertise in various health fields and cooperation between the Sultanate and Cyprus stopped discussions at the meeting held at the Gov General Diwan of the Ministry between His Excellency Dr. Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Saidi, Minister of Health, with his Cyprus counterpart, His Excellency Dr. George Bamboo Reeds. The two sides reviewed the process of health services between their countries at different levels and the development in all primary health care, medicine industries and medical education. The meeting was attended by Their Excellencies the Undersecretaries at the Ministry of Health, His Excellency Dr. Advisor of the Ministry of Health Affairs, His Excellency the Ambassador of Cyprus accredited to the Sultanate and a number of officials. Early detection of autism spectrum disorder is considered a basic step in the di diagnosis which requires providing treatment and rehabilitation services in the early age of children. That was stressed by His Excellency Dr. Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Saidi, Minister of Health, when he presided over the national workshop of launching the program of early detection of autism spectrum disorder organized by the Ministry of Health. The workshop included a group of work papers on health by consultants and specialized doctors in this field from inside and outside the Sultanate. Deriving from its belief in the importance of first aid in saving people's life, Oman Medical Simulation Center in Oman Medical Specialty Board organized a theoretical and practical course on first aid and resuscitation. The board aimed to raise health awareness among its staff on how to deal with emergency cases, provide help and first aid for the injured. The course focused on a number of pillars like acquainting the participants with the basic principles of first aid and mechanism of dealing with emergency cases like brain stroke and fainting. Efforts are being exerted during these days by the Directorate General of Regional Municipalities and Water Resources in the Governorate of North Sharqiyya for the maintenance of municipality slaughterhouses, as well as monitoring the livestock barns. Meanwhile, the cleaning campaigns also continued working to clean and maintain internal roads around the villages and various areas in the Governorate. Around 100 slaughtering waste collection points were also distributed in the Governorate on preparations for the blessed Eid al-Abha. More than one in ten of the residents of the small Italian village of Akia Roli in Campania is 100 years old or more, and Italian and American researchers are trying to work out what makes their lives so long and healthy. More details in the following report. 
Amina is 93, Antonio is 100. Both are in good health and completely independent, just like most of the elderly inhabitants of Acciaroli, a little village in southern Italy where reaching 100 years old is no big deal. More than one in ten of the villagers has passed this milestone. We only eat healthy stuff. We eat a lot of fish and fresh produce which we grow ourselves. We have our own rabbits and chickens, only local products and olive oil. We consume what we produce. The benefits of the Mediterranean diet were first discovered here in the 1950s by the American scientist Ansel Keys. Sixty years on, a new generation of American scientists alongside researchers in Rome are looking into the secret of the long lives of the residents here. Is there something in their genes that may, along with something they do, make them live longer and healthy? For instance, they may have a certain gene that allows them, when they eat a uh, garnish such as rosemary, which they almost always eat every day and they grow it, maybe this does something that helps we know rosemary improves brain function. None of the 80 people who took part in the study, a group including 25 centenarians, suffers from dementia. They're also all physically active, whether it be fishing, walking or gardening. What we would like to do is create a tool that says that someone who wants to live well and for a long time should have a certain type of diet, a certain level of physical activity, a certain type of social life and a certain way of thinking. It's a formula these scientists hope one day to export to help ensure it's not just Italians who have the chance to live long and healthy lives. Now for the general weather forecast around the Sultanate. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies will prevail over the coastal areas of the Governorate of Dhofar and its nearby mountains. Rest of the Sultanate will have clear skies with cloud accumulation and scattered rainfall over the Hajar Mountains. Low clouds and fog late at night and early morning are expected over most of the coastal areas. Winds will be easterly to northeasterly light to moderate over the coasts of Sea of Oman, while on the coastal areas of the Arabian Sea, it will be southwesterly moderate to active. Seas will be rough along the coasts of the Arabian Sea with a maximum wave height of 4 meters and slight to moderate along the rest of the coasts with a maximum wave height of 1.5 meters. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. The Supreme National Committee for the Electronic Census of Population, Housing and Establishments 2020 approves the form and work plan of its project. Al Ghouta Cave in the Wilaya of Al Hamra is reopened to the public after its renovation.
and the Middle East Exhibition for Transport and Logistics Services is launched in Muscat. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the newsroom and the studios, it's good night.